turned off, that would be great. Up now we have Charles O'Neill from Fargo First. And then we have Alicia from... Yeah! Go! Yeah. Go! Go, hey, Charles! Go! I don't think I would start these words of prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you for this day. I pray that you would guide my words and you would give me the words to say. And in your name, amen. Amen. We've all heard the story of Job, how he lost everything, and his friends went through and told him that it was all what in Job chapter 4, verses is not 5, 6 through oh, uh, 9 or so. It says 7 through 9. Mm. Think earnestly, I beg of you, who that was innocent ever perished, or were those upright and in right standing with God ever cut off? Uh, as myself have seen, those plow iniquity, sow troubles, miss and mischief, reap the same. By the breath of God they perish, and by the blast of anger they are consumed. But God will test us. Even through all of this, he remained faithful to God. His friends came to him and said, all of this is your fault. What did you do? What did you do? What are you hiding from us? What, what is it that you did that we don't know about, that you're hiding? You know God can see everything. And what you're hiding from him, what, why are you hiding this from us too? Why not just confess, confess your sins and just give up? Yet, he, even though through all of that, he could go through and he, he, he told his friends, basically, you know, I'm not the one who's condemning me. I'm not the one who's going around condemning everyone. I mean, look, look now. What are you saying about me? Why don't you go and look at your own heart first? God gives us the choice to either go and try and pluck the needle out of someone else's eye. But why, why don't we turn around, look in the mirror, and examine ourselves and make sure we're right with God before we say anything to Him? This changes everything. If you think about it, how can we go up to someone and condemn them for something we do ourselves? How can you be like, you know, you really shouldn't play that game, and then go around, turn around the next day, and play it yourself for hours on end? Or, you know, you shouldn't be on the internet right now. You should be off doing your math, or doing your school, for instance. A lot of us do that. I'm even guilty of that. Why is it we can do this so easily? We can come down on our siblings and our, and our and friends for doing something, and then we just turn around and do the exact same thing the next day. Okay. Okay. But Job was upright, and he could say in Job 19.25, for I know my Redeemer and Vindictor lives, and at last, and the last, at last, the last one, he will stand upon the earth. And after er, even this body has been destroyed, and my flesh, or without it, I shall see God, for whom I, even I shall see for myself, and on my side, and my eyes shall behold him. And not as a stranger, my heart pines and is consumed within me. It said his wife told him, curse God and die. How, how what would you, I mean, think of that. You married your wife, who's supposed to who would be there with you, supporting you through all of this. But they, she just turns to you and says, just rebuke God and die. I don't know you anymore, basically. I, you're far from me. Why is it 
that we can do that to people. We can just rebuke them for something we do ourselves and just feel fuck completely fine about it. Or how he loses everything and he says, naked I have entered this world without any possessions. Naked I will leave this world without any possessions. But through everything that happened when he, his sons died, he lost all his money, he lost everything. He did not curse God unjust. He did not curse God unjustly. Yeah. I know what it's like to lose everything. Six years ago now, we had a house fire. We lost everything except the clothes on our backs and what was in our garage. So I know the feeling of what it's like to lose everything. But if we remain faithful to God, he will remain faithful to us. We now have a new house in the same place as it was before. We have new friends the same time we lost our house. All of my close, the closest friends I knew of at that time had moved. The closest people I had were three miles away and we never got the chance to really see them. So I see some, even now, I still have troubles with this, as you can see. It, it's, it's not an easy thing. But in Psalms 34, verses 17 through 19, it says, when the righteous cries for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all of their distress and troubles. The Lord is close to those who are of a broken heart and saves such as are crushed with sorrow for the sin are humbly and thoroughly penitent. Many evil wolves confront the constantly righteous. But the Lord delivers them out of all. Yes. Thank you.